Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about sore throat during breast cancer and its treatment. What is a sore throat? Let's just make sure we're all talking about the same thing. There are actually different symptoms that people will classify as having a sore throat. The most common is pain when we swallow but also dryness or scratchiness you might consider a sore throat. And the tips I'm going to provide now will address all of these symptoms. So first of all, it's helpful to understand who's at risk for a sore throat during breast cancer and its treatment. I'm going to start with surgery. So surgery is often the first part of breast cancer treatment. And when we have surgery, if it's a major surgery, for example, if you're having reconstruction, and you're put under general anesthesia, that's done by having a tube go down your throat temporarily just during the surgery when you're under anesthesia. And that can cause a lot of irritation to your throat. That's natural, it's super common, and it will go away. If it's lasting more than a few days or a week after you're done with your surgery, it's important to talk with your doctor because they may want to check to make sure there's not a more serious problem going on. The way to manage a sore throat after surgery, you can use lozenges, you can use um, uh, uh, mouthwash for people with a dry throat. That can be really useful. You want to avoid alcohol-containing mouthwashes. We try to avoid sugar-containing lozenges because you don't want to have a lot of sugar in your mouth that will increase your risk of um, decay of your teeth which we see a lot in people with dry mouth who use sugar sweetened lozenges. So I really want you to avoid that. And just in general, stay hydrated, but also stay in touch with your team if it lasts more than five to seven days, because they may want to take a look in your throat. The other form of treatment that can cause a, a sore throat is chemotherapy. About 5% of people or one in 20 people getting chemotherapy will get severe or meaningful sore throat, meaning it interferes with their ability to swallow. Chemotherapy kills cells that are rapidly dividing, and everything in our GI tract, all the way from the top to the bottom, has cells that turn over really rapidly. So chemotherapy can affect rapidly dividing cells in your throat, and that can lead to a sore throat. It's also possible that you have something called thrush, which is basically a yeast infection of your mouth. If you find that your throat it's not just sore, but you have a bad taste in your mouth, or you look in your throat with a mirror and you see that there's a coating on your throat, you might have a yeast infection. That happens when we get antibiotics after surgery, when we're on chemotherapy, and also people getting steroids for chemotherapy, which are really important in preventing nausea, can increase your risk of getting um, thrush in your mouth. That's treated differently from sore throats from other causes. So you'll want to bring that to the attention of your doctor. If you get radiation therapy to your neck, for example, if you have cancer in your neck and you get radiation there, that can cause a sore throat as well. Like chemotherapy, radiation affects cells that are dividing more rapidly. And as I mentioned before, those cells in the throat are pretty um, rapidly dividing, so radiation will affect those as well. Kind of like a sunburn in your throat. Hormonal therapy or anti-estrogen therapy can also cause really a more of a dry mouth, but that could lead to some soreness. If that's the case, because hormonal therapy is given for many years, this is something that you may end up changing your hormonal therapy if this arises in your case. So lots of things can cause a sore throat. I don't, I want to say it's normal, but also it's not something you should ignore. It can be really uncomfortable. It can affect the taste in your mouth and also just make it hard for you to swallow. I also want to mention that other common things are common. Even just because you're having treatment for breast cancer doesn't mean you might not get strep throat or you might not have COVID, for example. So it's important not to just say this is from the breast cancer and its treatment, but to remember your primary care doctor is there for you as well and your oncologist may say this isn't related to your treatment, time to see your primary care doctor. It's not uncommon to have other things. Even a common cold can cause a sore throat. So now you've listened to what can cause it, how do you manage it? Well, one key thing is to stay hydrated. So make sure you're drinking a lot of fluids. 
that doesn't always help, however, and lozenges that don't contain sugar can be really helpful. Now, some of those have artificial sweeteners, which can be kind of nasty. For some people, they just don't like those. Um, neither of my kids can handle artificial sweeteners. I don't like them. So lozenges may not be the answer for you. What you may find is having foods that stimulate saliva production. It's really helpful, like citrus. So you can put a little lemon in your water, and that can give you some temporary relief. Something else that's really helpful is gargling with salt water if your throat's irritated. The salt water seems to really help. I would also recommend that you really amp up your oral hygiene. So even if your throat is sore, you may think, mm, I'm not going to brush my teeth or floss as much. That's actually the opposite. What you want to do is decrease the load of bacteria in your mouth. And so if you floss once a day, floss twice. If you brush your teeth twice a day, brush four times a day. If you brush your teeth only once a day, try to go up to at least two times a day. And finally, if you smoke or you're exposed to smoke, this is a really great reason to quit smoking. Even if you haven't had a sore throat from smoking before, when you're going through a major stress on your body, things kind of change. So this would be a great reason to consider smoking. And if you live with smokers, this might be motivation for them to quit or to take it outside so that you have less exposure. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have questions or comments, drop them below and we get back to you usually within a week. Click like and that will help other people going through the exact same thing find this video. If you haven't yet, subscribe because we are always producing new videos that you might help find helpful. You can share it with somebody you think might be useful. We just went live on Instagram, so follow us there. And as always, if you live in the U.S., go to yerba.com for your personalized report.